Hey guys, welcome back to another one. My name is Brayden and I'm an artist. So in this one, I'm going to be showing you how you can very easily draw a portrait using the Loomis method. Now I will say that if you do enjoy this approach to sketching out portraits, then I highly recommend that you check out my Skillshare. I have an entire series dedicated to this exact approach. I also have a new series on how to easily sketch out eyes the same way that I do in this tutorial. So I will have a link to my Skillshare in the description of this video and I hope it helps you. But what to expect in this one? I'm going to be taking you through and showing you how you can use a compass to draw a simple circle from there, taking your charcoal pencil and sketching in the oval identifying your vertical and your horizontal axes. And then from there, taking your pencil and sketching out rough contour lines to bring out the basic shape of the reference in question. Once that's done, we're going to start sketching in the nose and then I'm gonna show you how you can use the nose as the basis for sketching in your first eye using anchor points to identify your eyelid and then sketching out the rest of the eye from there. And then once that first eye is drawn in, using it as a reference point for your second eye. After we've done that, it's going to be an analysis of how we build up our values, how we can sketch in and use our pencil in different ways to bring out different details. At the end of the day, it's just a rough sketch, but as they say, practice makes perfect. That's pretty much what to expect. I will say that if you enjoy this, make sure you like, subscribe, and then turn on all of your notifications so that you never miss when my latest and greatest videos hit the channel here at Messer Creations. All right, let's get it. All right, so we're gonna be using our compass. And in this one, we're gonna do the entire sketch with a medium charcoal pencil. So first things first is we're going to draw a circle. Something just like this, okay. And then, seeing as I kinda, kinda messed up right here, we're just gonna take our pen tail click eraser and we're just gonna blast this real quick, get that cleaned up. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our medium charcoal and we're just going to place our oval right here okay and then of course we have our vertical axis and then depending on how the eyes are which in this case there's something like this we're going to pull that horizontal axis over like this and then what i like to do to elongate the head is i like to pull this down and that's a, essentially the temple plane and then we're just going to extend that horizontal axis over and that is a guide for our brow line and then here what we're going to do is we're going to take our pencil and we're going to go like this put it on its side and we're just going to get a rough estimate right based off of the reference photo exactly how that chin looks all right this is how i do the majority of my portrait sketches and one of the reasons why I like to take my pencil and sketch the majority of my basic shape like this is because the lines themselves don't have to be defined, right? They can just more or less be implied lines, right? We're just going for the basic shapes. Like we have the hat here. I'm just gonna pull the bottom of the hat over, something like this. And then of course it comes up on the side of the subject's face over here. And then it folds, so we're gonna sketch in that fold. Something like this here. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? Because remember, any adjustment that you need to make, you can just hit it with an eraser and then you can re-sketch it out. It's not a big deal. Something just like this. And this is also one of the reasons why throughout this whole process, 
you want to make sure that you use a very, very light pressure control, right? Barely touch the paper and let the pencil do the work. And then right here, this is the center line of the face, okay? So I'm just gonna pull this down real light, and this is just so I can have a better understanding of exactly where the center of the eyes live. And then right here, here's my cheek plane. And this gives me more structure to where I can place those features, right? Okay. And then what we can start to do is we can, let's place the eyes, right? So right here, let's go like this. And then I like to kind of draw in the, the eye socket, right? You know, kind of where exactly do those eyes live? Something just like this. And then here, the bottom of our oval, we're gonna pull this over and that's gonna signify where the bottom of the nose is placed, okay? Now with all eyes, it's really up to you, but what I like to do is I like to do this here. I like to pretty much start with my subject's nose. And one of the reasons why I like to start with the nose is because the nose is very much a central feature of the face, right? So what you do is once the nose is placed and sketched in somewhat, you can then use it as an anchor point for the rest of your features, right? And what I always like to do is once I have the nose sketched in, then I always start with the eye that's farthest away, right? That's on the other side of the nose. And then once I have that eye placed, I use that as a reference point for placing my other eye. That way I can very easily draw in with accuracy the height and the width of the second eye. But the biggest thing when you're sketching in your nose here is remember to go nice and light this whole sketch is very much that. It is a sketch. Unlike some of my longer step-by-step -step drawing tutorials where we do render those images in charcoal, I am not using the three-layered method for this one. Like I said, we're only going to be using one grade of charcoal in this sketch, and that's the, the medium uh, grade. Now, for those of you that don't know, when it comes to soft, medium, and hard charcoals, what they mean when they say soft, medium, and hard is that is basically the amount of binder or you can think of it as the glue that's infused into the charcoal during the manufacturing process. So whenever I do quick sketches like this, I like to use the medium grade charcoal, okay, because it's a nice Goldilocks. I'm able to throw um, a lot of uh, value, right? I'm able to get um, super low values, you know, very, very rich darks. And then here what I'm doing is I've established my eyebrows. So now these are what they call anchor points, okay? And we can use these anchor points to establish the top of the eyelid, right? Something just like this. I actually have a full course on how to sketch out multiple angles of eyes using this method over on my Skillshare page. I'll leave a link to that if that's something that you're interested in in the description of the, of the video. But... This is how it works. So once you get the top of the eyelid established, then you can very easily place the bottom of the eyelid. And then depending on the angle of the eye, you can then kind of sketch in the bottom. Always remember that the line on the bottom of the eye is gonna have a much thinner line quality than the line on the top of the eye, right? The bottom of the eyelid. One of the main reasons for that is because of the eyelashes, right? Most all subjects have eyelashes. And then here, what we're gonna do is we are going to place uh, the iris here. Just kind of sketch that in, nothing too fancy, right? We, we more or less just want to have kind of the basic shape of this eye. And then as we progress through this sketch, we'll start adding more detail. But then here, what I want to do is I'm referring to my reference photo and I want to start to solidify the edge 
of the subject's face, right? This is where we're going to really start to get away from that general sketch of our Loomis head. And we're going to start to bring out the actual features that we see in the reference photo. So see, so you're like right here. And now I can start to more accurately place the hat in the reference photo where before I was above the eye, and then I look at the reference photo and that hat is actually in line with the eye. So I brought it over and down. And then in here, what you can do is you can start to very, very lightly use a nice light pressure control and you can start to lower the value in places that need it. In this specific reference photo, the value on the inside of the eye sockets is fairly low. And then if you just want to go like this, you know, flip the pencil on its side and continue to lower the value in specific places, you can do that. You can do that. It's not a big deal at all. Something just like this. Okay. But what I'm doing in this step is I'm looking at my reference photo and anywhere that has a lower value, that is what I am targeting, right? That, that is what I'm doing, especially when you deal with a monochromatic scale, such as, you know, black and white, you know, using the charcoal medium, that's really all you have to work with, right? Because we're, we're not dealing with color theory um, in this instance. It's black, gray tones, and then, you know, lighter tones to complete white so and you can vary those values that you convey in your sketch with pressure control right you just you push a little harder not too hard right lots of papers regardless of weight um, you will risk scratching the paper if you do press too hard but if you just go over the same area over and over again and use a light to mid pressure control with your pencil you will be able to lower that value more and more so I've always said that drawing like this, you know, especially with charcoal, it's a lot like cutting hair. You know, you can always uh, cut off more hair, just like you can always add more charcoal. But if you add too much, it's kind of like cutting too much hair off. You know, it's, <laughs> it's very hard to grow that hair back. It's very hard, depending on your pressure control, to, um, to retrieve that charcoal off of the paper without leaving some kind of charcoal residue, right? Which may or may not be a value that you don't desire in your final drawing okay all right so now it's kind of a trickier part right what we're doing is i'm taking this reference point the bottom of the nostril and going up and that's pretty much the start of the eyebrow uh, the reference photo has uh, fairly thin eyebrows right so now what we're going to do is i just kind of want to establish the beginning of the eye socket and then we're going to do our first anchor point, our second anchor point, and then our third anchor point, right? Something just like that. And don't overthink this part, right? So you just stick to those reference points. So I've got the first part and then the second part. And then we got our third part. There it is. So there's the top of the eyelid. Okay. That's the top. So now what we want to do is this is more or less the bottom of our eyelid. Okay. Something like that. And then I'm gonna use a reference point right here, something right about right about there, right? Right about there. What I did is I took my pencil, I lined up the bottom of the first eye, and then I brought it over. They call it using a reference point or like pretty much if you're drawing something that's somewhat symmetrical, say like there's a set of eyes on a head, right? One, two, you can always use the first eye to help kind of navigate drawing in that second eye to make sure they're more or less the same size. I've mentioned this um, in other videos, but a lot of times the more you study human features, the more you start to realize that most faces, most people um, don't have exactly symmetrical faces right they're they're off just just slightly so 
Just be aware. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to kind of lower the value here a little bit. And, and you can play with, with shading your sketch, guys. You don't have to sketch it exactly like me. Like, if you don't like holding your pencil like this for conveying your lower values, maybe say you just want to straight up hatch it, or maybe you want to cross hatch it, you know, do what feels good, do what feels natural. Every artist is different. You know, there are general approaches to getting a specific aesthetic, right? But at the end of the day, one of the things that makes art so intriguing, so romantic, so beautiful, is that everyone is a little different. And everyone's art is important and specific to them and their own techniques. So don't think that just because I do it a certain way that you have to do it. You know, find the value in, in what I'm teaching for yourself and then make it your own. Okay, so we pretty much got that. Like I said, this is just a general charcoal sketch. I'm not going to be taking smudgers and blending the charcoal and smoothing it out, right? I'm not going to be using brushes to help with gradation. A lot of times, if this was going to be, say, a commission piece for a client, then yes, I would obviously go in and I would refine the drawing as best I could to make it look as realistic as I could. But this is more or less just practice. Practicing such as this, the basic shape for portraits especially is, in my opinion, what is so hard about drawing people, okay? That basic shape, especially because, you know, we're not drawing, you know, say a bird that looks just like all the other birds. So you can kind of get away with you know, general shape and proportion. This is a person, right? This is an individual. This is someone that when you're drawing them, if you're not able to convey that shape with, with accuracy, it's not going to look right. It's not going to look like the person. So obviously don't overthink it. Don't let that kind of get you down, right? Or make you second guess yourself. Just draw it. And the cool thing that I like about charcoal is as a medium, it is extremely forgiving. You know, if you need to extend uh, a jawbone, say for example, like what I'm doing here, I mean, look how easy it is. I'm just ever, ever so lightly accentuating that jawbone, right? And bringing it, bringing it down. And then here, what we're doing is this gentleman has a nice beard, nice trimmed up. And so what I'm doing is I'm just going in and I am bringing his mustache out and I'm tying his mustache into, into his beard. Something just like this. And when it comes to subjects that have facial hair, it, again, this is up to you, it's, it's personal preference, but I have always found that it is much easier if you actually sketch in the facial hair first, because then kind of like you do the nose to give you a basis point for the eyes, that facial hair is a basis point for um, the upper and the lower lip, okay? See, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my pencil like this, just like this. And one of the reasons why I'm putting my pencil on its side like this is because I don't want there to be any defined lines. A lot of times if you stand a pencil up on end and you start sketching it in, depending on how uh, much pressure control you're using, what'll happen is because of the nature of the angle, that charcoal will leave a much more defined line, which, you know, doesn't look very accurate to the reference photo, especially because, you know, lips are soft, right? The way they plug into the skin um, of the face, it's a very, very subtle, transition it's it's not it's not this line right it's where a lot of younger artists tend to tend to mess up by taking your pencil and you can do this with graphite as well it's this isn't specific just to just to charcoal but by standing your pencil on its side and getting that foundational layer you can then that allows you to then be able to go in like this and you can really start to 
kind of bring out the, the difference between the subject's upper lip and their lower lip. So in this reference photo, the subject's upper lip is darker. It is of a lower value uh, compared to their lower lip. So this gives you that sense of contrast. And because of the contrast, it also you know, makes it seem like the light coming down isn't necessarily hitting the top lip. It's more or less hitting the bottom lip, right? And then here, I'm gonna adjust this. Now that I'm looking at it a little more, I need, to, I need to thin out this neckline and I need to bring in this turtleneck a little bit, right? So this is what I call um, making an adjustment. Bob Ross, you know, a wonderful painter, he always called these happy little accidents. I don't like to call them accidents, I like to call them adjustments, right? We're just gonna simply adjust and we're gonna go from there, right? Art is inherently um, just a bunch of errors. Like every artist, whether they admit it or not, makes some level of error throughout a composition, whether it's a painting, a drawing, a simple sketch, it doesn't matter. We all make adjustments and it's okay to admit that, you know, we're all human. We're not machines, not yet, right? <laughs> so, so now what I'm doing is I'm just going through, notice how I'm, I'm, I'm solidifying the, the basic shape that we see, right? When it comes to optics, your viewer, when they look at your drawing, <clears throat> they first start to make sense of it through the outlines or like you could think of it as like the contour lines are actually what they're called by definition. So I'll actually kind of go through the definition of lines real quick while I'm just kind of lowering the value here on, on the subject's jaw and you know, his beard. But a line by definition is pretty much just a moving dot, right? The artist creates a dot and then you push or you pull that dot across the paper that's basically what a line is. Um, contour lines are like what we did when we first started drawing this, right? They're lines that show you where an object ends. You know, by themselves, they'll only convey an object's basic two-dimensional shape. And then, of course, it kind of gets more complex when we get into, like, line qualities. Um, line qualities are how thick or thin a line is. So when you vary line qualities, and you can actually vary one line, you can start it off with a very, very thick quality at one end, and then you can thin it out um, as you get to, to the other end of that, of that line. And by doing that, you can actually mess with the illusion of uh, that third dimension, right? And then there's line weight, um, and that's pretty much just the strength of a line or how dark or light that line appears uh, onto the paper, okay? So like, say for example, um, there tends to be a correlation with a line's weight and its quality. Thicker lines tend to have a um, darker weight, right? Um, and then thinner lines tend to have a, a lighter weight, so. But contour lines are very, very similar uh, to implied lines. Implied lines, that's where you pretty much continue a line, but then you break it, and then you can continue the line again. Defined lines are one continual line without any break, right? So that's, that is a general understanding of lines in drawing uh, by their definitions, okay? And it's important to understand uh, definitions in art because if you understand the definition of it, that means you understand principally what you're doing uh, on paper, which will make you a better artist, not only in the short term, but also in the long term. So what I'm doing here is I'm just, I'm just lowering the value. But mo most of the time when it comes to doing sketches like this, like notice this, I'm just kind of pulling up from the bottom. Just pull it from the bottom. So what that does is that solidifies the edge of the jawline. And by definition, what that is, is that is very much um, an implied line, 
right? We're putting that implied line right over the contour line. So this right here, this is just kind of the shadow, right, on the subject's neck, because the light source in this reference photo is coming from the very, very top, so. And then right here, look at this. This was what I was talking about, how, how forgiving charcoal is. We can just extend the subject's jawline and make it just a little, a little longer, right? And because it's uh, his beard, right, we kind of want it to be a little, a little fluffy, right? All right, so now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna kind of sketch in this turtleneck real quick and I'll show you some, some, uh, some hatching tricks. So if we want, let's see here, kind of do that, okay. Now you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I, I want there to be a little bit more detail in this sketch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and just very lightly, I'm just gonna kinda roughly sketch in kind of the stitching of this hat here. So we got our vertical lines and then I'm just gonna kinda come in and just kinda pull this over. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but I'm just, I don't know, I just felt, felt like, why not? Sometimes I just can't help myself, right? <laughs> so we got the, the top there, and then we'll do the exact same thing on the, on the bottom fold of this hat here. But this is where you can really just have fun with your sketch, you know? Every artist desires a certain aesthetic, a certain level of detail. And of course, as you perpetuate that uh, over time in your career, you might very well um, become known for a specific style. This is one of the reasons why if you listen to artists that have been drawing and creating for a while, they'll be the first to tell you that when you're, when you're first starting out, don't worry about your style, like lots of artists get hung up on that. Your style is inherent, it's already a part of you. What your job is, is to create a body of work, right? Volume, just, just if you're a painter, just paint. If you're a visual artist and you like to sketch and draw like this, then just draw and sketch and just have fun while you do it. That style, that you have that you're so worried about that will eventually come out in your work you, you don't even necessarily need to speak to it it's already there so so don't worry about that and where i was going with that is sketches like this one of the reasons why i love sketching like this is because if you're just more or less sketching like what, what i'm trying to do here where i'm just i'm just sketching it for for practice then you don't necessarily need to worry about details but if you want to really you know, mess with your line work and, and, and use your brushes and, and use your smudgers and, and really dress this sketch up, you can do that as well. You know, that's, that's not a big deal. Art is subjective. You, you, do, you do what you want, all right? But here what I'm doing is I'm just going through and I'm kind of, you know, his beard does go up his cheek but he's got it trimmed down quite a bit, so I wanna bring that out. And then here with his turtleneck, I'm just gonna bring in the center fold and then check this out. I'm just gonna pull this up and over, up and over, up and over. See that? And what that does is sketching, you know, hatching more or less like this, this kind of shows the viewer that this is a turtleneck and that it's folded, right? That it's rounded on top, so. That's a, a quick little technique that you can use. And then I'm just gonna pull this down here, just like this. Again, the pencil is on its side here. Pencil is on its side. Nothing crazy, I just, I didn't want this to be a, a floating head, right? I wanted to give him a little bit of a neck. And then here I'm just gonna kinda beef up the nostrils just a little bit. We're almost done with this one, so. But yeah, that's that's really 
really the big thing when it comes to sketching like this is focus more on the shape that you're trying to accomplish. And if you've never drawn with pencils on their side, like, like what I did in, in this tutorial, I'll give it a go. You know, especially when it comes to drawing out your initial Loomis head and then identifying the planes of your face so that you can effectively place your features um, on your head. Because like I was saying before, it's the proportions of the features on a portrait that are the hardest, especially when you're just starting out, right? And even for more seasoned artists, if you, it's one of those things where if you don't do it every day, or at least every few days, um, you can get real rusty real quick, so. But just notice how the more I target those lower values, the more I accentuate that value scale, right? That difference between complete black to complete white and then all of my tonal variations in between. Um, you could go in and you could spend a long time dressing this up, really making um, the drawing pop if you wanted. I will say that I don't have too many portrait tutorials such as this on YouTube. However, I do have a ton of them. I have an entire series where we sketch out um, statues and I have it broken down where I show you how to draw in the Loomis method. And it's more principally focused where this was just, I very, very just kind of arbitrarily drew it in um, because it's very much a part of my flow. But if you're interested in what I did, especially at first, then I highly encourage you to um, check out my Skillshare page. I got the link in the description of this video because I have an entire series where I walk you through and we draw each one. Each class is broken down into digestible lessons. And um, I also have a new series that just came out where um, how I drew the eyes in this portrait, right? With the anchor points and all that. I have an entire series dedicated to that as well. So I hope to see you there. Um, if you do enjoy the classes uh, on my Skillshare, um, definitely upload uh, projects uh, of your work. Um, I can speak to those and um, make sure you leave reviews as well. Okay. All right, well, that's it. That's all. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It was a lot of fun. Stay happy, stay healthy, and remember, never stop drawing.